This is my probable league starter, and it uses a unique weapon that I haven't really seen much since 2017, back when double dipping existed. Consuming Dark allows you to convert 30% of your fire damage into chaos damage, and with a pair of these combined with corpse skills, we're able to play a poison corpse, in this case, Cremation Pathfinder. Now, Corp skills are obviously one of the strongest ways, or most efficient ways at least, to get early game damage, and when you pair it with Poison early on, you're able to also get Proliferation for really, really great clear as a Pathfinder. The reason why I'm opting for Cremation of Exhuming though, as opposed to Detonate Dead of Chain Reaction or Volatile Dead of Seething, is because this build tends to run one, fairly low cast speed, and two, I really want to be farming Extreme Archaeology, so big boom, Expedition on day one. Cremation of Exhuming allows for a more passive playstyle, it's sort of like a comparison between, say, Seismic Trap and Blade Trap. One of them can possibly do more damage sometimes, while the other has a much more passive playstyle. You sit there, you watch damage over time come out. Cremation of Exhuming is more like Seismic Trap in this analogy. Now, the way that this skill works is that every time a projectile is fired by the geyser, a nearby corpse will be detonated. That's why I link GMP with this. Using that baseline support gem, you'll be firing 8 projectiles a second, and with the quality, you'll be firing something like 8.8 .8 projectiles per second, in other words, blowing up almost 9 corpses per second. That's a fairly high damage effectiveness rate, and honestly, the damage difference between DD Chain isn't really that significant as I push towards like day 2 or day 3 gearing, where I'll be hitting dot cap anyway, and it can be pushed much further with the inclusion of Original Sin in a very late game. POV. Now of the builds I've prepared this league, this is probably the most consistent, the most well-rounded, and definitely the most hardcore ready. If I was to league start hardcore tomorrow, this is 100% what I would be playing, but it does have the very obvious downside of being a two-button build. If you don't like that, suck it. However, it does have a possible transition into a cast on crit Ungle's Harmony Detonate Dead Chain Reaction Poison setup. While that build is a one-button build, and there's multiple ways to set that up, whether you want to go Bow or Lancing Steel, I don't think necessarily that that's worth considering, especially in the early game, unless you really, really value that level of QOL. I personally don't. I think this build's just going to feel way better against difficult content on day one, things like Uber Bosses, things like T17 maps, and also has way more power early on, especially when you don't have a lot of gear. Let's jump into this POV. I've put a lot of time setting up the possible iterations of this build, and I think in terms of well-roundedness, this is probably one of the top five strongest builds you can play on this league, start pound for pound. Two things before I totally forget. Firstly, you do need to build a Desecrate pool, so basically what you want to do is get your Spectre pool as high as possible, like with a like Midnight Bargain, Wraith or whatever the hell, and then go pick up certain corpses. So I use Kotaba Heralds that can be found in Act 5. You're gonna go there, Desecrate, raise one Spectre. You're gonna go to Act 9, grab a Sand Warren Slave. Orc Colossus, Orc Champion can be found in Act 3. There's a few other corpses, but you want to at least have that in your Desecrate pool, and then once you go back to Hideout, take out the Race Spectre Gem, you have that forever. The second thing is regarding playstyle. When you're not playing Arcanist Brand, when you're playing the regular setup, you want to have Cremation active, and then you just want to spam Desecrate on top of bosses. I know certain people won't know that, I just want to bring that up right now. Let's go into the POV now. So rather than starting with the tree, I just want to start out talking about the core gear requirements. And the only core gear requirement is at least one Consuming Dark. I really would go for two because it, you know, more than doubles your damage to have two Consuming Darks instead of one. But technically this build can be played with one. I've done it in an SF Hardcore before where I found the dagger off of like a Beastcraft or just randomly a Merc Lab or something like that. It can be done. Lightning Coil isn't actually mandatory right away on day one. You can opt for a rare chest instead. It's what I'll be using for most of my day one progression. Probably until like, I don't know, the 15, 16, 17 hour mark when I have all my watch zones done. I'm starting to like, you know, look for pretty significant gear upgrades. Otherwise though, the rest of this gear is fairly straightforward. Just a lot of like generically good defensive gear with res on it. I don't really have too many offensive modifiers other than dot multi here. You can run damage while leeching um, if you play ES leech support. Although that's kind of your sixth link, so mm, not really important. This regen mod is good. I would tend to opt for it, especially if you're playing a relatively low ES setup. And this is going to be contingent on, you know, what other pieces of gear you have. Early on, you might be playing with like a Sadist Garb or an ES Evasion Hybrid base because it's easier to color, and that will give you much more energy shield where you won't really want even this um, Regen 150 ES per second mod. Flasks are a bit dynamic. The later part of early progression, like pretty much after you're deep into your T16s, you'll want to play Trial E Flask, but early on, I'm going to be playing probably with this Flask setup with, you know, Quicksilver, Silver, Granite, Quartz, and a Life Flask. And this is really kind of much easier to play early on because Quartz Flask lets you um, not need to run a Sage Advise with a Bestial, and then Silver Flask lets you skip that Onslaught on Kill on Boots, which, you know, you don't really want to have to get early on. The other thing about this Flask setup is that I'm kind of going to be timing this Elemental Flask transition with the addition of Lightning Coil, because this is obviously coming with a gigantic Lightning Res penalty. I think that just, like, the re-gearing process for this might be a little bit difficult for new players, so I'll just, you know, say that now. Some of the skills now, Cremation of Exhuming has pretty generic links for this. Um, don't forget to run GMP, it's the really, really, really most important link that you can possibly have in this thing. Otherwise, there's just a bunch of poison stuff. 
Void manipulation is kind of interesting. So the reason I run this early on is because I want to pair it with this mastery that, you know, lets you do chaos damage, an extra 10% um, more if the enemy has ES. And if you're only dealing chaos damage and the enemy has any amount of ES, generally speaking, that ES won't break if you're playing void manipulation here. Aura set up on day one, Grace Term Defiance and Herald of Agony. This switches out quite significantly as you change things around. If you get an early lightning cool, you can also switch into purity of elements quite early, so it just depends on what you're looking at there. Movement skill, Rolling Blades, faster attacks, Frost Blink. So I thought this would be really bad. Consuming Dark has a base attack speed of 1.2, and Rolling Blades with low APS tends to feel really shitty. Um, I personally don't find that it's that bad. This build also has a ton of movement speed, um, so I don't really care about that too much. I think it's like pretty solid. Oh, also on like a day one POB, you should be running Nature's Boon, and just the amount of movement speed you'll have with like a, especially with the Silver Flask here instead is really, really, really high. Frostlink is my move skill of choice for teleportation on mapping. Obviously, switch over to Flame Dash on more difficult bosses where you have more flexibility. Despair, Temp Chains are your two curses. I run Divine Blessing Haste. This doesn't actually increase your real damage. Even though it does in POB, I am just trying to make sure this is almost one to one or close to one to one with a bunch of everything set up. And I have this gigantic 55 less cast speed multiplier because cremation of exhuming and DPS calcs tends to also add in your cast speed. Um, but I do run this in general while I'm mapping. As a two button playstyle, you really want to have good cast speed. I just, you know, like this better. If you're going to play more serious bosses, Malevolence is definitely the order that you want to be opting for. Punishment, I also have. This is for when you go for Anathema. Um, I just want to have this to make sure I remember it in my gem slots, but you wouldn't use this early game at all. It's not very good even for poison builds because you have Wither, and the increased damage taken here is only additive with the increased damage taken from Wither. CWGT IC, when you're playing with the armor setup with the termination, Molten Shell will probably outpace, but the moment you swap into a period of element setup, IC will be better. But IC is good regardless. Finally, you run a Desecrate Faster Casting Cascade setup. This is for when you're mapping, and when you boss, you want to swap this Cascade out for Arcanist Brand and play a much, much, much more passive playstyle. Finally, the tree. It is fairly standard as far as poison builds go. I think it's a little bit annoying because it really lacks resistances, um, and it doesn't have a lot of increased damage early on, but I think it's a fairly smooth tree as far as things like suppression and like chaos res go. In the early mapping stage, a lot of times I offer tolerance and I grab... Um, this mastery right here, just to like make it much easier to res cap in early maps, but that's kind of up to you. And then otherwise, it is a little bit stretched, but because it's so stretched, you'll never have really issues with dex or int. The only thing you'll really struggle with is strength, perhaps, thinking about what your gear looks like. And then, you know, you make it all the way over to EO. That's pretty much this tree. Oh, actually, Ascendancies, Toxicist, Reprisal, Adrenaline, and Angel's Boon. This actually becomes Master Surgeon on day two. So, in my later POB, I'm going to be running Master Surgeon. I've got a Timeless Jewel in here now, but the rest of it looks fairly similar, other than the addition of a Cluster Jewel, and this will be fairly standard as far as like a Chaos Dot Pathfinder goes, because you're running things like, you know, Spike Concoction, and just like Chaos Damage stuff. Skill-wise, it's still fairly similar. Um, not much is changing. I'm, I'm putting in Punishment, but the Aura setup is quite different now. So because I'm running this setup over here with the flask, and then I'm also playing flagellant flasks on day two, that should be much better to sustain because, you know, I'm looking to get a pretty solid belt as far as flasking goes. I'm not as concerned about hit base mitigation from attacks, um, basically what Grace gives you, especially if you're getting like a POE Watcher's Eye. This amount of max hit will be really, really strong because you'll have a ton of recovery from taking, um, sorry, I forgot to get this mastery, but this is like flask four mastery over here. And this, this POB has moved around a lot, so I don't really know where this is going, but um, this combined with Flagellum Flask setup, combined with um, Master Surgeon and a good Life Flask, I think should be fairly solid as far as your recovery goes for multi hit mitigation. And honestly, the playstyle is really strong too. I don't really think I'll need this. I really like the addition of Petrified Blood in this POB. Um, you don't have that many recovery layers, so I think this is really strong. And this kind of gives you like a scuff Defiance of Destiny setup, and sets you up really well for actually using Defiance of Destiny later. Purity of Elements here is obviously replacing Determination, and then I've swapped a couple other things around to fit in Malevolence full time, while still keeping Divine Blessing Haste. If you are really, really serious about build power, there's other things you can do and just um, put Divine Blessing with Malevolence, but honestly, I don't really want to play without Haste at any point on this build. Punishment is in now because I do have Anathema. Gear-wise, on day two, I've also added Inextricable Fate. So I imagine in this part of the game, I will be looking much more to be trying to kill like harder bosses and do a lot of boss farm um, early on. Inextricable is able to round out that last 40% of conversion that Consuming Dark doesn't. Now while this won't apply while you're actually mapping, this will apply while you're bossing for the most part, and I play pure Inextricable builds. 
I think this is sort of like making up for that slight weakness, while this is making up for the lack of clear that you'd be having on a pure inextricable build. You're also able to run the dual Nature's Affinity for certain content. So if I was to say farm Simulacrum, I would actually pair Nature's Affinity with Inextricable Fate. Really, really strong setup, especially defensively for semis. And it gives you crit reduction, another really important thing for Simulacrum. Taste of Fate's really good. And you can see my Fizz Max hit becomes really insane, as is the case with, you know, any sort of later game Pathfinder. A good Watcher's Eye will go a long way here, but especially that physical damage taken as hits when affected by Purity of Elements, Fizz taken as is just such a powerful mechanic on PF that you can really leverage with the addition of Taste of Hate. So when you're ready for that, you can go for that sort of thing. Otherwise though, you can see that the gear is actually not that different, but the damage is way higher. I'm looking for these corruptions on the dagger. Consuming Dark is a super, super common unique. I can even self farm this thing with beasts. So you get them a lot of time when you're running um, the Corrupted Vault Temple maps. So, I mean, this is kind of what I'll be looking for quite early, honestly. If I'm able to, Defiance of Destiny will be my amulet of choice, just because the recovery from multi-hit is absolutely insane here. We saw just how powerful this thing is, even in high damage things like Gauntlet. And the fact that this is still in the game is kind of absurd to me, but, you know, it is what it is. The last thing I want to mention is your other amulet option. So Eternal Struggle is not bad, because I don't have a source of 15% culling, but obviously it's contingent upon how good the implicits are. If you get like a Chaos.Multi implicit, this can be really, really strong. The other thing is Ashes. Ashes, the plus one levels is kind of good for general utility, but the quality of skill gems allows your cremation to fire more often. Subsequently, you're able to detonate more corpses more often, so this is also a pretty big DPS gain. I think it's somewhere around like 15%-ish. Death Rush is the other unique I want to cover. When you're mapping, this is just really strong. I kind of forgot this existed, so this is more of a reminder for me. But in SC Trade, if you're not playing with Death Rush, you don't have another source of adrenaline, you should really be reconsidering how you're setting up for mapping. Lastly, in terms of leveling, I've tried to keep this tree to a minimal number of regrets. I think the total number of respect points is like, I don't know, somewhere around 15 or something. Um, it's basically these prods at the start, this flask area here, and then multi-shot and leech and accuracy. Peacock does want to tend to run a much more aggressive tree. It likes to take things like swift venoms, likes to take toxic strikes, it wants to take things like field medicine, and these will all give you far more build power. Even the keystones down here, precise techniques, point blank, grabbing the burning mastery here for um, increased damage, all really, really crazy powerful. I'm choosing to actually sacrifice a lot of early game power on this build in order to save regrets because the respec is actually fairly significant. And at least once you get into like, you know, the level 60, level 70 range, this sort of peacock tree is acceptable. Just follow the tree as you see fit. I'm going to go like this over here, over here. I'm going to go up all the way to the strength node. And then I'm going to path up towards trickery without taking this area and then over to fang. So this will be like sort of the starting area of the tree. Something like this. Um, ignoring this side. And then... As I'm approaching like Act 3, Act 4, I don't go for multi-shot, I go for the leech, I go for the poison nodes, and then take the accuracy when needed. And then the rest of the peacock tree just follows whenever you feel fit. The moment you click Eldritch Battery, it sort of depends on your gear, but you might be able to swap into a DB Hay setup. But worst case scenario, you should be able to swap into a 25 and 250s as long as you take Charisma. So that'd probably be Determination plus Haste and maybe Herald of Agony. Skill-wise, I have all the skill setups here. It's got a lot of flexibility. You got four extra sockets, assuming all... Um, Sockets are like maxed out, so you have four sockets everywhere. Um, this is a set of about 10 to go for. If you get like an early Dendro Bait, you could drop Chance of Poison. And then I have some random notes about stuff. This is actually really, really helpful. I've noticed that if I don't remember to buy the right gems, my damage in the early game really fucking suffers. So just reference this in terms of what gems I'm looking for. I think I've included everything, but this should be a fairly solid resource as far as things go. If you have any other questions about this build, I'll probably be playing this build on League Start when I really think about it. It's hard for me to get away from Pathfinder. It's just such a well-rounded sentence, especially the fact that Progenesis still exists, Taste of Hate still exists. The top-end defenses for PF are so great. And then having a smooth build that can transition into that, that already is poison-based, that already has a fairly smooth pace style, and that does have a cog to each transition, is just really enticing for me. Um, so we'll see where things land, but this is probably what I'll be playing come League Start. That said, I have a few more really interesting ideas that I think can come your way that are really, really cool. All sort of around the same performance level, at least in the early game. So I hope you enjoy those things.